So to answer the title directly, yes, Jamal Murray is a good player. But for a guy who is about to get a max contract, I don't think he's really putting up the season you'd want. Now, I don't blame Denver for giving him the max because that's the way the NBA is. It's either you max out your young player or somebody else will. I mean, his defense has improved, so cool. But you gave him that max, hoping that he can be a big-time scorer for you. And I think you're going to need that if you're Denver in the postseason. I mean, I know this team has won a lot of games. And, I mean, I predicted these guys to get the two seed, I believe. And I wouldn't be surprised if they got the one seed. But it's like, is that going to work in the playoffs? That everybody touching the ball through Jokic and, you know, everybody taking like 13 shots a game or whatever? Or are you just going to need Jokic to be amazing and then one other guy to be great and be a consistent 20-plus point scorer for you? I would think it's that one. And uh, to me, Jamal Murray's the guy. Maybe Will Barton becomes that guy or something, but I would think it's Jamal Murray. And I just don't think he's really showing that he can be that guy this season. 17 a game, and the efficiency is not very good. He's not taking a million threes a game. It's only five a game. He's running like five pick and rolls a game. He's not really an ISO guy. And, And the thing with Murray is... It's a lot of inconsistencies because, you know, he just had a bad game against the Pelicans. He has the great game against Phoenix with the buzzer beater, bad game against the Lakers, a couple of good 20 plus point performances. Then he has like three or four straight of blah games and he's putting up 17 a game on 53% true shooting. Like that's not that great, even if he's still a positive overall. It's just like, what do you do with all this, you know, if you're Denver? Because you don't want to sacrifice the thing that makes you unique, which is your depth and everybody touching the ball and stuff. But I think you need a second real star here. And assuming you're not going to trade for the guy right now, I think Jamal Murray's got to be it. So, you know, looking at the team touches, Jokic is number one at 93. Jamal Murray's number two at 76. Will Barton, number three at 52. I mean... I don't know, do you push it a little more in favor of Murray? I mean, you don't want to compromise everything that other guys are doing, but again, to me, you really need to get Jamal Murray going a little bit more here. So does that mean just more pick and roll, more isolation for Murray? Well, his ISO stats are not good. His pick and roll stats are decent. He's in like the 60th percentile on five a game, which is nice. But what if you just ramped it up to like 9 a game for Jamal Murray or something, you know? Especially because, to me, he should be a good enough shooter to be really, really good in that specific type of thing. I mean, I know his 3-point percentage has not been good this season. He's at 33%, but I would assume that that'll just clean itself up in time. And, I mean, to me, that's the blueprint for him being a great player. It's a lot of screens and shooting jumpers when defenders can't get around the screen or whatever, you know? I mean, you look at... I mean, look at a guy like Devontae Graham, who has been kind of a really big deal in pick and roll. He's in like the 74th percentile. He's running nine and a half pick and rolls a game, and we know that a lot of those are jump shots when the big doesn't step up and all that stuff. So... I feel like that's a fair thing to ask Jamal Murray to do more. I don't feel like you would be killing the vibe of the team if you just had Jamal be a little more aggressive. And does that mean you'd have to go away from your kumbaya, everybody touch the ball, everybody shoot the ball thing a little bit? Yeah, but I think it's necessary, you know? Because, I mean, I'll, I'll, just, I'll tell you right now, okay? If, if the Nuggets got to the conference finals, I mean, potentially depending on the way the seedings worked out, but that or even the finals off of Jokic doing his thing and everybody else scoring 16, 17 a game like it is now, I would be surprised, especially in the West. Like, maybe you could do that in the East. I mean, the Bucks are similar to that, but Giannis is better than Jokic, so it's a little different if you ask me. But I think in the West, it'd be pretty tough. There's a chance I'm wrong. There's a chance Denver just rides this whole everybody touch the ball thing. And Jokic is, you know, we rely on his passing and stuff. There's a chance they ride that all the way to a championship. But I'm just going to put myself out there and think, I don't really think it's going to happen, you know? 
So anyway, more pick and rolls for Murray. Potentially more ISOs. I mean, he's never been a big time ISO guy. I think the off ball stuff you can run for him. You could, you know, get at least get him some more switches onto bigs who he could take off the dribble and stuff, you know? All that kind of stuff. And then potentially just hammer it home for the dude to be the second star player of this team, you know? And I think even with that, you can still run your creative off-ball stuff. You can still have Murray set screens for Jokic. You can still do the Jokic elbow post-ups and everybody cut into the rim off of that and everything. So, yeah. I'll be honest, I'm kind of already done. It's like five minutes, but I have no other ways to just say Jamal Murray needs to shoot more and all that stuff. So, that's it. Uh, Jamal Murray's good, but... I'm just saying, man, you know, if, if we're going to dissect every single contract that players get, and is this guy worth this, is this guy not worth this, then I think we got to talk about that with Jamal Murray. Because, I mean, you look at Denver's salary situation over the next few years, they don't have a lot of cap space to really do much. And Murray's a big reason for that. They're saying, look, you're our guy. You're going to be our number two dude next to Jokic. And right now, I mean, he technically is the second best player on the team, I would say, but yeah, 